He picked this thing up late. Indiana up three. Quincy Lewis fixes that and then fixes up the crowd. Huge night for Lewis. We're tied at 62. Must win for Indiana as well. A win here would mean they're 500 again in conference. A.J. Guyton with the floater. Hoosiers led by five, but Minnesota came right back. Tied at 74 again. Lewis, nice pass to Joel Prisbilla. Gophers up two. Free throws tied the game. Mitch Onstad, 3.6 ticks left for the win. No, we're going to overtime. In the extra period, it's Guyton again. Guyton, low, three-pointer. Nailed it. He finished with 27. Indiana up three, but Lewis would not be outdone. Off the screen, baseline jumper. Nails it. Bobby Knight, stoic. Two free throws by Minnesota. Gophers up one. Lewis, no. He finally misses. Chris Bill is there for the tip. Lewis finished with a game-high 36, the last six of which came from the free-throw line as Minnesota wins in overtime, 90-83. So Minnesota wins the must-win game, especially important for the Gophers since they win Allison with the steal. Finds Wayne Turner on the break. Turner, 12 for Kentucky. Kentucky up 61-50, but here comes Georgia. Michael Chadwick misses the layup, but Jumaine Jones has his back. Kentucky lead down to five. Kentucky lead just two late in the second half. D.A. Lane in the corner for three, and Georgia has the lead by one. We're tied at 72 now. Final seconds of regulation. Jones, Jumaine Jones, who was hitting everything under the sun, can't nail it, may not have even counted two. Regardless, we're going to overtime. In overtime, Kentucky by four, and it's Jones. Can we call this top of the key? From way downtown, <laughs> fruitcake. Where is the key? Kentucky lay down a one. It's three at this point. Scott Padgett, who was hitting everything under the sun in overtime. Wide open, got to put a hand in his face. Padgett, 10 of his 23 in overtime. Kentucky wins 91-83. So we have a pair on fire. Well, uh, Career high 30 against so Illinois great Saturday. Great Game high 27 great. against Iowa. Penn State's only lead right there, 46-45. Iowa clawing back. Dean Oliver drives to the hoop. Spin, scoop. He had 17. Hawkeyes up nine. The turnovers plagued. Nittany lines all night. Jess settles off the uh, turnover. Jess lays it in part of a 15-1 IR run. Jerry Dunn, 27 turnovers for his team on this night. Penn State had been averaging only 12 turnovers a game, but had 15 in the first half alone. It was a major reason why the Nittany Lions fell to 2-6 and six in conference. The Hawkeyes improved to 5-3 and three in the Big Ten. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I spells Mississippi against South Carolina. B.J. Mackey. Offensive foul under two minutes ago, tied at 65. Eddie Fogler doesn't like the call. Oh my. Really doesn't like the call. He has got significant issues. He's gotten one technical. He's going after everybody he can go after. Was not thrown out. And as it turns out, his team wins anyway. Pushed the assist, it didn't matter. South Carolina wins its first conference game of the season. Let us take a look at William Avery, one of his five assists to Elton Brand. He had 12 points, and Duke was up four early. North Carolina trying to keep it close. Adamola Okalaja on the back door. Duke was up four at the half. Second half, Ed Cota would hit the pull-up J. He had 20 in the game, and we're tied at 45. North Carolina actually up one. Trajan Langdon here. His first three of the game after he missed his first five from three-point land. He had 18. Duke up two. Duke's now up one. Chris Carwell's pass is picked off by Ronald Curry. Here comes North Carolina. Curry, Dakota, back to Curry. Tar Heels up one. More Blue Devils now. Chris Burgess steals it to Carwell. On the loose. Nifty move. Dukes up three. Another turnover as Carwell takes it himself for the jam. He had 14, and Duke wins it. 89 to 77. So Duke is now 5 and 0 against top 10 teams this season. The Blue Devils have won 15 in a row and 33 in a row at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Duke had lost 10 of the last 12 against North Carolina, but the, but the Blue Devils win here, giving the Tar Heels three losses with the steal and the jam. He had 22 points in the game. Second half, fans want to watch Steve Francis, and Steve Francis would oblige. Off the turnover, Francis. Oh, boom! He had 21 of the game. Down by 17, Florida State trying to somehow come back. Damis Anderson, the huge jam, threw the foul and also cut his finger. But then it was way too late. Ateezy, the big block. Maryland doing what it does best, running the break. Terrence Morris on the offensive rebound for two of his 16. Maryland cruises 107-87 to as the Terps remain one game behind Duke in the ACC. The Terps
And the carry dome. Syracuse came out. S.M. Oaken. Jason Hart for three. Hughes hit its first 10 of its first 11 shots. Up 15 early, and then Hart off the crossover dribble. He had 17 at the half, but the Johnnies made a run before the half. It was just a four-point Syracuse lead at the half, and in the second half, we're tied with 10 minutes to go. The Johnnies making a serious run. Bootsy Thornton grabbing the loose ball, and Bootsy going the other way, working it with Ron Artest, who finishes and is fouled. Artest 19, Bootsy 21. The Johnnies with a two-point lead. It's a three-point St. John's lead. Three under. Under a minute to go, we're going the other way. Reggie Jesse, no good. Back the other way. Ryan Blackwell, cross court to Jason Hart. Ron Artest is now blocked. But St. John's couldn't make a free throw. And Syracuse had another shot. 17 seconds left, three-point game. Alan Griffin's three, blocked from behind. But right to Hart, wide open three, in and out. Ryan Blackwell, rebound. Prayer three, no good. Syracuse 0 for 7 from the field, two turnovers, no points in the last 356 of the game. St. John's held Hart to just seven second half points. That will put a smile on Mike Jarvis's face anytime as the Johnnies rebound from that heartbreaker against Duke by rebounding from a 15 point deficit in this game to improve to 8 and 1 in conference. Said Coach Jarvis, they played every single game as if it was going to be their last. Michigan State lead. The team cleaves the other way, but Jason Singleton says nah. Cleaves 4 of 13 from the field on the night. Buckeyes down 5, now it's Singleton on the offense. Buckeyes trail 56-53. Spartans up 1 now. Cleaves dishing, making something happen. Jason Klein is doing the happening. 4 for 6 from 3-point range. I don't know if that made sense. Spartans up 5, but team Cleaves took it over down the route. Team high 16 Cleves wound up with. He scored 10 of his 16 in the last two minutes and nine seconds and credited Coach Tom Izzo for lighting a fire under him in this five-point Michigan State win. Quote, quoting Cleves, he got in a few guys' faces at halftime, but he gave me that stare. Auburn and Mississippi State first half. Bryant Smith on the run, taking the pass from Doc Robinson. Tigers up 36-23 at the half. Second half, Mac McGadney hits the three. He had 15 points more on this freshman in a moment. Tigers off the steal. It's Smith. High percentage, two-handed rip, two of his 16. Auburn wins by 10 going away. Said Mississippi State coach Rick Stansbury of Auburn, I think they are the best team in the league. And we During the Huskers' four-game win streak, Danny Nee's team has trailed for just one minute, 26 seconds. Kenny Gregory goes baseline. Circus shot. He had 21, ties the game at 47. Nebraska running. Kerry Cohorn. Bombs away for three. Huskers on a nine-zip run. They're up 60-53. Huskers now putting it away. Andy Markowski. Whoa! And a foul. Nebraska wins it 84-69. Benson Hamilton led the way with 20 points and 12 rebounds. Kansas now has lost back-to-back -back games for the first time in almost five. The third-ranked Cardinal, already 7-0 and in conference, took on 12th-ranked Arizona Thursday in the McHale Center, where Arizona has won 24 straight and where Cardinal coach Mike Montgomery is 1-12 all-time, and Stanford was considered the favorite. Montgomery, as you might imagine, scoffed. Quote, I think they should have their head examined. It's been more than 10 years since Arizona took its home court as an underdog. And Jason Terry could care less. 13 first-half points. Arizona up 40-36 at the half. To the second half of this fabulous game. Rick Anderson steals the pass down low. Gives it to Terry. High percentage finish. Arizona down one. Stanford cold from outside much of the game. Heating up with less than four minutes to go. Arthur Lee for three. Stanford up two. Chris Weems for three. Stanford up four. Arizona hit six free throws to go up two. Richard Jefferson along the baseline dispatches with his man and nails the jumper. Arizona up 76-72, but Stanford tied it up at 76. Eight seconds left. Jason Terry in the lane, hits it. He had 29. Wildcats up to 3.4 seconds left. Chris Weems, they have to go the length of the floor. Weems gets it, heaves it, can't get it there, and that'll wrap it up. Arizona wins it 78 to 76 and for the second straight season Arizona prevented Stanford from starting off 8 and 0 in conference a record the Cardinal has never achieved in Pac-10 play. It's Arizona's sixth straight game decided by two points or less and it snaps Stanford's 13 game winning streak. UCLA at Pullman Washington State Steve Lamon watching Baron Davis miss at the line but Jerome Moisu gets it back Moiso. 
follows himself emphatically at the other end. Washington State kicks it out to Jan Michael Thomas for three. Thomas led the Cougars with 16, but too much youngsters in blue. Bruin blue. Moiso. Another high percentage rip. UCLA wins it. 69 to 66. This was a game of runs. UC said Musketeers coach Skip Prosser. I knew it was a big game when the priest referred to it in mass the other day. While it might seem as if Prosser's team would need some divine intervention against the fifth-ranked Bearcats, keep in mind Xavier had won two in a row in the series coming in. To the shoe we go, first half, there are rejections, and then there's what Kenyon Martin did to Lloyd Price. He sends it all the way across the court and into the first row. Martin, five first-half blocks. Second half, Cincinnati up 11. Xavier making a run, though. Lenny Brown for three. He had 21. And Gary Lumpkin for three, and then Gary Lumpkin for three and the foul part of a 16-2 Xavier run Lumpkin led the Musketeers with 25 Xavier would take a three-point lead now Bearcats up two Jermaine Tate 10.6 boards since he by four then they pull away Melvin Levitt he finished with 23 including that three ball as the Bearcats do indeed pull away to win it by 10 first time they have beaten Xavier in three years since he extends his home court winning streak to 28 games the Musketeers hit 46% from three-point range, but just 35% from inside the arc. Illinois looking for its first Big Ten win, visiting Michigan. Second half, Wolverines by one. Cleotis Brown working the baseline and working it well. He had 13, Illini by one. Michigan's next trip down, it's Robbie Reed. The BYU transfer hits the three, 13 for him as well. The Wolverines pumped as they regain the lead. Next Illinois possession, it's the freshman, Lucas Johnson. That's a three ball. Illinois up by one. Johnson had eight. After a Michigan free throw title at 59, under 11 seconds to go, it's Johnson. That's Victor Chukudebe in the corner. That's Victor Chukudebe in the spotlight. Just four points, but the last two were huge. The Illini snap a seven-game losing streak with a 61-59 win. Illinois avo avoiding what would have been its first 0-8 conference start since 1907. Clemson in transition, Harold Jamison, Terrell McIntyre. Now on the other end, it's Jason Floyd. Then Jamison, oh boy, right into Bobby Kremen's hands. Took more than five minutes before either team put a single point on the board. They replaced the Nets in this one, but certainly not due to wear and tear. The teams finally did put some points on the board. 11 seconds left in the game. Clemson down two. Will Sullivan no, and problems with the putback, and it's McIntyre can't get it to go. We have achieved an entire highlight and not one hoop. Rest assured, though, there were some teams who did score in this one as Georgia Tech